בעזרת השם, ליקוטי מוהר"ן, תורה מ"ד 44. אין רבנו יסייג טו אס, פירוש אחר. תורה מ"ד, ליקוטי מוהר"ן, אין רבנו יסייג, פירוש אחר, different explanation on that, that a person should give צדקה לארץ ישראל, to give charity to ארץ ישראל. ועל ידי זה הוא נכלל בארץ ישראל, and by that he is included in ארץ ישראל. To give charity to Eretz Yisrael, tzedakah means justify, to justify your connection to Eretz Yisrael, to be part of Eretz Yisrael. And by that you're going to be part of Eretz Yisrael, you're going to be included in Eretz Yisrael. If you just want to receive, you will never going to have part in Eretz Yisrael. If you just want to take something from Eretz Yisrael, you will not going to have... This is why Eretz Yisrael belongs to us and not to the Palestinians. because they just want to take from Eretz Yisrael and we want to give to Eretz Yisrael. When we came to Eretz Yisrael, so we gave our neshama to Eretz Yisrael and we broke our hands into Eretz Yisrael and our legs and our minds into figure out how to plant and how to, how to seed and how to harvest. And you see that after uh, 100 years that people are, are here working, uh, so you can see that it's the most, the, the state that developed uh, the fastest in the world. So, and, and, and it's only because that we're giving our neshama, our soul into, into the land. So this is why it's yours. But when the Palestinians are here and they're just trying all of the time to take for themselves and, and I'm not afraid to say those things because it's a truth. It's just, that is the truth. Just trying to take and to take and to take. I saw once a video of a poor person, a Palestinian guy, that he said, even if you want to live here as Palestinians, admit, face it, to live here under the government of, of the Jews, of the, the Israelis, going to be much, much better for us than to live under the government of, of, of Muslims. Look at the rest of our countries, look at Egypt, look at Jordan, look at uh, all of those places are, are, are not as nice as Israel, not taking care of their civilians, not helping, not, not, uh, in the, in, uh, not taking care of the children, education and, and health wise and, and no, no social security that is really supporting, sewer system, plumbing, you don't have anything and here now we're giving everything to everyone, how much We're thinking and, 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 and giving to the electricity and to the wa water systems in the Arab villages and we're taking care of, uh, of people that live here without connection to how, who are they and what. We're just, that's our nature. We're giving to Eretz Israel. So by giving to Eretz Israel, you're included in Eretz Israel. I mean, you and Eretz Israel are one. So like I said, tzedakah, it's charity, it's to justify, means to... to really to give and not to come to take. L'Eretz Yisrael, to, the, to that will, Eretz Yisrael is the land that opens your heart to the will to connect yourself straight to God, straight to heaven. And people that don't have that will to connect themselves to Eretz Yisrael, they feel foreign. If you don't feel like you want to connect yourself to, to purity, to Hashem Yidbarach, to the Gdusha, so you feel foreign, you feel like something is wrong with you. You feel that, that something is missing. Even if you live in Eretz Yisrael, you don't feel connected. Even if you have a house that you bought, in, you, you feel disconnected. Why? Because you're not searching for Hashem Yidbarach. I'm trying to say that to my students all of the time, that if, if people are just trying to, 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 to come and to lean on you and to take from you and to accept from you, They will never going to be able to, to receive what that you have to offer. If you really want to enjoy from what that I have to give, so you need to give for that. I received from my rabbi, from Rav Shalom Arush, so much that I don't know if someone can understand how much I received from him. I received him from him. He is walking with me to wherever I go. That's how much I received from him. I received him from him. And... It's only because that I gave him myself. It's not because that he was so generous to give himself over. 
He was giving himself over only to who that gave himself to him, even though that he's a very generous person. But still, you cannot give if someone is not giving you the ability to give him. So he needs to invest. He needs to give from his time, from his hour, from his talents, from his will, in his prayers, in his tefillah, to sacrifice. When Rav Shalom was sick and we went to pray for him, we done six hours at Bodhidut in the Western Wall. And I done that so many times that I was doing six hours at Bodhidut. Once some person came to me and told me, hey, you want to go to Uman? I told him, yes, of course. He said, okay, I'll buy you and I a ticket to go to Uman. 24 hours, we were coming back. Six hours, eight hours, we've been in the Tzion, in the grave of Rabbeinu. And the rest were just flights and, and, and driving. And that's it. Six, eight hours, we were in the Tzion. So I said to myself, okay, you're going to have six hours to be in the Tzion. What are you going to pray? So I said, okay, I'm going to pray on Arav. So I, I, to say I was wasting my, my flight to Uman on praying for Arav, you can call it like that way. Because I was investing my flight on praying for Arav. So six hours and all of this flight to Uman, I done it only to pray for Arav. Because I was thinking to myself, okay, on what I'm going to pray. What is the highest thing in the world for me? My rabbi. Okay, so I'm going to pray for him. And I, 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 I went all of the way over there only for him and not for myself at all. And I had that opportunity to go and to talk about my issues and to pray about my geula and about my shalom bayit and about my parnasah and about my children, to do one hour on every child, to do one hour on my wife, on our shalom bayit, on... But I threw it all, and I went and I was giving my neshama to my rabbi. So this is why the neshama of my rabbi is going with me to wherever I go. That means charity to Eretz Yisrael. That you want to be included in Eretz Yisrael, then Eretz Yisrael is going to host you. You're going to be part of Eretz Yisrael. It means you're going to have the nature of Eretz Yisrael. When I'm talking in classes, I can hear Rav Shalom talking from my mouth. It's not something that students of Rav Shalom, they know him, they know me, they see, they hear Rav. He's talking from my mouth. It's because that I sacrificed myself. Because I was not eating enough, and I was not learning enough, and I was not working enough, and I was not doing anything. Because the priority for me was to do things for him, to illustrate his books, and to write those books with him, and to do whatever he told me. And when he told me that it's a good thing for me to do it but the do on him, so immediately, every day of my life, from that day and on, for over two years, one year and a half minimum, I know for sure, something like two years, every day I was doing half an hour, but the dude, only on him, only on him. And when he told me that I need to do one hour, but the dude, only on my wife, I done that also. So I was stuck because now I had to do tshuva, so it's at least half an hour. And one hour I need to do on my house, great. And half an hour I need to do on Arav. In those days I was doing minimum two hours in Bodhidut every day. And if you're going to ask me how, I'm going to tell you why you ask. Try. Go and decide that you're going to do it Bodhidut like you should. When I decide that I'm going to go and do six hours in Bodhidut every day, I done it. 40 days. 40 days. I have a friend and a student that he was very excited to hear that I done six hours it would do it every day for 40 days, he decided to do it also. I don't know if he knows it, but in the 22nd day that he done six hours every, it would do it every day, he told me that he's doing six hours every day, and then in the next day he stopped. Something happened to him and he couldn't continue. So <laughs> that is the kindness of Hashem in Barach, that he reveals to you where you get your powers from. In the first time that I decided to go and do six hours at Bodhidut every day for 40 days, after 12 days I came to Rav Shalom and I told him that I'm doing already 12 days every day, six hours at Bodhidut. The next day I couldn't do it anymore. I stopped. Because when you think I'm doing six hours at Bodhidut, so Hashem Yitbarach is showing to you, only by the merit of your Rebbe you can do six hours at Bodhidut. So only when it came to me that really I need to, to, to find the inner point of truth, of my connection to Hashem. And it came through my rabbi. It came through how that I received the wisdom, through the path of, of sacrificing and giving and 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 and, 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 and putting the effort on, on 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 searching for the truth. Now I know that I'm what that I'm holding is 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 real. And it's not an imagination. 
You can go and do 40 days of six hours in Bodhidut and not reach anything. It's just going to take you away from Hashem. Like the prayers of Korach, that he was doing long in Bodhidut every day and he was just rejecting himself from Hashem with every prayer and prayer. You can sit with those tzaddikim at the same table and to be disconnected to them completely. Really, if you want to be connected to those righteous people, you need to, f to, to feed them with yourself. You need to give yourself over. You need to give your time. You need to give your money. You need to give your neshama. You need to give your blood. When Rav Shalom told me, it's good for you to give me money on Pidyon, from that day and on, every day, every time that I saw him, I gave him money on Pidyon. 200 shekels, 50 shekels, 70 shekels. And I saw him a few times a day because I was working with him. I was learning with him. I gave him tons of money, huge amounts of money. Huge amounts of money. One day he called me and he told me, I want some, there was some story over there, and he told me, I want to give you a certain amount of money. I told him how much, I'm not going to say it. He said, that amount of money, big amount of money, huge amount of money. I told him, Rav, I want you to keep that money for yourself. He asked me why. I told him because I believe that my money in your hands is going to make more fruits than in my hands. And that's how my attitude was. That was my shita. That was my, my way of thinking. Because when you believe in your rabbi, you just give him your heart. And you're not questioning, and you're not doubting, and you're not bringing your wisdom, and your schalim, and your conclusions, and your understandings. Okay, you don't understand something? Go ask your rabbi. He will answer you. Don't worry. But Rabbi Nathan said, the reason that I accepted more than everyone else, more than the rest of the students of Rabenu, was because that I was throwing my wisdom. And whatever Rabenu said, I took it. And that's it. That's it. Rav Shalom once in the Yeshiva Chut Shel Chesed, we were standing in the main Bet Midrash over there. He told me, if a person doesn't have talents, he doesn't have talents, he was not gifted, Hashem didn't give him talents. So what he can do, this poor guy? He should sit in the Bet Midrash and learn Torah all day long. But if you have talents, if you learn how to play the guitar, those are examples that Rav Shalom said. So you have to go to outside to the streets and to play and to talk to people. Because else what you're doing with the talents that Hashem gave you? You're not allowed to be in the Beit Midrash. Words of Rav Shalom. So I took it and I believe in it and I'm following it. What's going on with the rest of 120, 150 students that are still sitting over there in the Beit Midrash and learning Torah all day long? All that they're not gifted. Oh, that they're not following the rabbi. But when you realize that Rav told you, you need to go and save the world. We have a mission. We need to make everyone believe in Hashem Yidvarach. So, or that you follow your rabbi, or that you rather to sit in Suda Shlishit and in Melav Malka and to hang out with the guys in the Ishi. What's the truth? What the Rav is saying to do, that's what we're doing. So for me, it's Rav Shalom. Great, so I took from him what that I could take. How I took it? By giving myself over to him, everything. When my kidneys were broken to pieces, when I had stones in my kidneys, my wife told me, we need to call an ambulance. I told her, I need to go to Arav. You, a person, can go to hospital when you have pains in your back. Great, go to hospital. I was dragging myself like that on the floor, on the ground, to the house of Rab, and Rab wasn't there. And I was sitting on the stairway, on the, on the entrance to his house for an hour, hour and a half, suffering pains of stones in the kidneys. It's, it's the craziest pain in the world. It's, 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 it's no Rab Vayom. It's horrible. And I was over there on the floor, twisted, and, and, and waiting that Rab will come. And when Rab came, I asked him, Rab, what can I do? So he told me you should go to the hospital. So I went. So I went. You think I lost one hour and a half? No, my life been changed. Everything been changed. When you nullify yourself, and it's not because that he is so righteous, and I believe that he is, but it's because of my faith to him. Kefum tsara agra, as much you sacrifice, that's how much you're going to receive. Yes, he is righteous, but he's not influencing his righteousness on all of his students. He is righteous, great, but how much you're going to receive, it depends on you, not in him. Okay, he is lighting, he is shining, he is watering, he is spreading, great. You have the vessels, you don't have the vessels. My job is to build those vessels. My job now is to spread the faith. Your job now is to open those vessels. And when you're going to see that you have something in your vessel, so now your job is to spread and to give.
This is Tzedakat Eretz Israel. This is charity to Eretz Israel. That you are ready to sacrifice yourself, to die on the way to Jerusalem, to die in the war and, and, and conquered Mevaser uh, Zion, and to fight in the Galilee, and to fight in all of the Yishuvim, and in the Itnachluyot, and to fight and to die on your way to the Kotel Amaravi, and to die learning Torah and learning in Beta Midrash. And if not like that, so we cannot. Eretz Israel Niknet Bisurim. That's the way to buy Eretz Israel. And I'm talking about it with Hashem Yidvarach all of the time, and I'm saying to him, please Hashem, please Hashem, have mercy on us, make it all be in kindness and in grace and with no pain and with no sorrow. Until he's going to change his mind, that's the way. When he's going to change his mind, going to be a different way, great, we're all going to celebrate. But for now, that's the way. You can want it, you can argue, you can hate it, you can hate yourself, you can hate him, you can blame him, you can blame the righteous people. All the options are, are open for you. But that's how it goes today. Reality, bottom line, if you're not giving, you're not receiving. Spiritually, if you're not giving, you're not receiving. Shalom Bayit. Take the best shidduch in the world. Can you have Shalom Bayit with her? After two weeks, you, you're going to realize you're married to, to a devil if you're selfish. If you are selfish, she's going to hate you. The best shidduch in the world can hate you. Why? Because you're selfish. So, people putting all of the effort on finding a good shidduch. Instead of putting all of the effort on become to be a good shidduch. That you're going to be a good shidduch for her. And then she's going to become to be a good shidduch for you. Why not? If you're a nice husband, if you're smiling, if you're communicating, if you're talking, if you're generous, if you have time for her. So, for sure she will be nice to you. She wants to replace you if you're nice. She wants to replace you if you're, if, you're, if you're a moron. That's when she wants to replace you. When you're stuck in your selfish, in your in being, who that you are. Stupid fool. Hashem is Barak, He wants you to be a man of truth. He wants a woman to be a woman of truth. What's the truth now? Today one of my students asked me an amazing question. And to that question, I don't have an answer. The answer of mine is to, you need to keep on suffering. You need to just believe in Hashem Barach. No salvations and no pidyon nefesh and no redemption and no, no geulot. Just that's reality. Deal with it. You cooked it, you eat it. That's what you have. That's your shalom bayit, that's your parnasa, that's your, your health, that's your life. That's reality. What, what do you, no, so now... If the truth is not supplying miracles, so now we're going to drop the truth? No. If the truth hurts, so we're going to drop the truth because it hurts? No. Everybody hurts sometimes. Everybody hurts sometimes. So you're going to hurt today. You're going to suffer today. You're going to be broken today. You're going to be sad today. But at least know that it's from Hashem. And go to Hashem Yidwach and talk about it. Hashem is closing my eyes and I see only darkness. Oh, but I see that Hashem Barach is closing my eyes and I see only darkness. So actually my eyes are not closed at all because I see that Hashem Barach is closing my eyes and I see now only darkness. So I can see that. So who cares what I'm going to see? Am I here to see the light or I am here to do the truth? If I'm here to do the truth, I'm ready to do the truth. Even if my bank account is going to reach zero, even if my powers, my battery is going to hit rock bottom, even if my shalom bayit is going to be so shaky, I'm not going to move from the truth. What the truth is? The truth is that I need to do tshuva, I'm going to do tshuva. The truth is that I need to apologize if I hurt your emotions, your feelings, I'm going to do tshuva, I'm going to apologize to do. The truth is that I need to keep on doing what I believe that is right, I'm going to do it. With money, without money, like Rabbanu said, you're going to eat, you're not going to eat, you're going to sleep, you're not going to sleep, you're going to pray, you're not going to pray. What's the real truth? Bottom line, you need to be here in Rosh Hashanah? Great, be here in Rosh Hashanah. That's the first thing. Rabbeinu said, be in Rosh Hashanah. That's truth. That's real. You believe in it? Okay, but I don't have an apartment. What's the connection? No, but I, don't, I didn't bought the food ticket. I don't have the mikveh ticket. What's the connection? Rabbeinu never talked about eating in Rosh Hashanah. Never spoke about going to the mikveh in Rosh Hashanah. Those are things that are not important at all. Rabbeinu said, you need to come. Where I'm going to sleep? Who's, so who was talking about sleeping? Who told you? Who commanded you to sleep in Rosh Hashanah? No, but I have to rest. Okay, so take care of Hashem. Good luck. Hashem will help. It's not, it's not connected. It's two different separated things. Rabbeinu said you need to come to be in Rosh Hashanah. Okay, now the question. You believe in Rabbeinu? 
or you don't believe. Rabbeinu said you need to, 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 to do one hour in Bodedut every day. So, uh, but I don't have time. I have Shlom Bait. I have my Parnasa. Okay, you have a lot of Sechel. You have a lot of brain. You have a lot of foreign wisdoms that are blocking you from seeing the truth. Rabbeinu said you cannot be kosher if you're not doing Shahid Bodedut every day. What can you say about that? You believe in Rabbeinu? Yes. You want to be kosher? Yes. Shahid Bodedut every day. And there's no discussions about it anymore. No, but I don't have time. Okay, so you won't be kosher. There's nothing else to say. Or that you think that you can be kosher without Rabbeinu. So you don't believe in Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu said you cannot. Even if you're the greatest righteous man, tzaddik, the greatest tzaddik, the admor, you cannot be kosher if you don't have one hour to do every day. Admorim, they have one hour to do every day. They're talking to Hashem. They're doing tshuva every day. Without tshuva, you cannot be kosher. You cannot be kosher. So if your truth is to believe in someone and to follow someone and to follow a certain way and advice and you want to do tshuva, you, and now you expect to receive. You, that's my purpose, that's my goal. I'm going to do it all the way. And no matter how much it's going to cost, no matter how much it's going it, it, it to hurt, if that's what I believe in, I'm going to do it. And if you're not going to do it, it means that your faith is shaky. It means that you don't really believe in that righteous man. It means that you're not really into doing tshuva. You just look for comfort. And the truth is that even that people are from, from birth and people are used to be religious and people are 20 years in tshuva, it doesn't matter. You can always wake up and realize that you're very, very far from Hashem Barach. Very, very far. Okay, so you're 20 years in tshuva. It doesn't mean that you want to do tshuva. Maybe it's you feel safe here. Maybe you feel comfortable here. Maybe you feel right here. Maybe you feel, okay, I, I, I'm fulfilling my obligations somehow. Maybe it's not the truth at all. The search after the truth is a search that, 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 that makes you change yourself all of the time that wakes you up all of the time to change and to become to be the one that Hashem Yidwach wants you to be. Even if it means to admit that you were wrong for the last 20 years of your life. Even if it means that you need to change your life. Even if it means that you have so many things that you need to, to change and to admit and, 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 and to fix. There's nothing to do. If you want the truth, the truth is going to rebuke you. The truth is going to educate you. The truth is going to bring you to that place that you're going to understand that even if you were wrong, you can still fix. You always have hope. But you need always to want that, to want that change, to be ready to sacrifice yourself, to be ready to listen to the voice of Hashem, and not to be stubborn, and not to be arrogant, to think that you know it all, and that you think that you're wise. I don't know. For me, this task of finding Hashem is is that is the that is the joy of my life. That is the satisfaction. That is the happiness of my life. And even when I'm realizing that I'm wrong, even when I'm realizing that I'm weak, even if I'm realizing that Hashem is still angry on me on something. So, what is my mission? What's in the peak of my priority? To work on myself. So great. So I just found another opportunity to work on myself. If the purpose of my life is to work on myself, and now I realize that I am the worst one in the world, so it makes me the happiest person in the world because I have so many things to do. And I'm going to be busy on doing good things for the rest of my life. But if my purpose in life is to succeed and to be honored and to be left alone, and now I have so much work to do, so then I'm sad and depressed and frustrated. But if I really want to do tshuva, and that's my desire, so when I'm realizing that I'm a sinner, so that's my cupcake, that my, that's my cup of tea, that's exactly what I want to achieve in life. I want to do tshuva. It's an amazing opportunity for me to deal with my lackings. That's the desire of my life. That's my will. That oh, I'm so happy. Thank you for opening my eyes, Hashem Barach, to see how far I am. Now I have the opportunity to fix that bridge that I burned with my bare hands. Thank you very much for the opportunity to do tshuva, to come back to Hashem. Thank you. How kind can you be? How kind, generous life can be to me to open my eyes, to see that I'm not honoring my friends, that I'm not honoring my wife, that I don't honor my children, that I don't honor my rabbi. Thank you, Hashem, on the opportunity. Now I can fix. 
If you wouldn't rebuke me, I would live in darkness for the rest of my life, thinking that I'm Prince Charming, that everything is perfect with me. But the truth is that I'm all wrong. So thank you for the rebuke. Love the one that rebukes you. Thank you very much. Chazak